Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to be watching all official DLC trailers for the Soulsborne games released by Bandai Namco and from software on their YouTube channels. I'll be using my insane levels of knowledge of the games to compare them to what we eventually ended up getting, pointing out inconsistencies, maybe scenes we didn't actually get in the game, and pointing out graphical errors, and hopefully getting some insight on how FromSoft promotes their games, because it did change over time. Okay, first off, we have the Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition slash Artorias the Abyss DLC announcement. This is on Bandai Namco's channel. Okay, so they included some base game clips in this. I mean, whatever. It was mostly gameplay. Uh, you have a few cutscenes here of like Calamite, but it's mostly gameplay, which is interesting. And you'll see the tonal shift as we go through to more modern day from software will include more cutscenes and story in their DLCs, trailers, um, instead of gameplay. And what's interesting here is we actually don't see Manus, which is the final boss of the DLC. We see the cutscene to the entrance, which shows Manus, but not like the actual fight. And But we show all the other DLC bosses. Overall, it's a decent trailer. It, it's short, and it shows the base game for some of it. So I think I'm going to have to put it in C tier. Moving on, we have the Dark Souls Artarius of the Abyss edition. This is on From Software's channel. And so this is actually with the launch of the game. Okay, so if we look here, we get the opening. Um, this is the closest that they really come to a cinematic trailer like they did with the Shadow of the Earth Tree story trailer. 
and it doesn't explain a lot it's just dusk which i'm pretty sure was in the base game this line of dialogue here and then obviously we get the picture of artorius's grave and his sword and we get something interesting here we still don't see manis by the way at least the actual fight but we get different locations right And then we still get vanilla cutscenes. Okay, so we do see, like, a tiny bit of Manus. But we see Calamate and all the other bosses. But... It's interesting that we still get, like, the vanilla stuff. Because... It... The DLC for Dark Souls 1 didn't have a lot of actual content in it. It had four bosses and a very short level. So so what they did, they made short trailers, and they didn't include a lot of information about the... The actual, uh, game, right? The actual trailer. So this is the Lost Crowns, this is for Bandai Namco, this is the announcement trailer. And the Lost Crowns is interesting because it was already showcased or it was a, we already knew about it before the launch of Dark Souls 2 that there's going to be three DLCs that were all part of a trilogy. Okay, so this is the announcement trailer for all the DLCs, plus it's kind of just a Crown of the Sunken King trailer, too. And what's interesting is, again, you see clips from Vanilla starting it off, and from the promotional imagery, like this is part of the trailer for the launch of Dark Souls 2. And then we just get these panning shots of the DLC, and obviously of the crowns. But what I like about this, as opposed to some of the other trailers, is we actually get a good glimpse of how big the Crown of the Sunken King is. Because from this shot here, this is basically where you start, and you can traverse all of this. Like, all that you see here, which is really nice. And again, they don't really show the bosses, which is interesting. I think they kind of have a fake out here of the the imperfects as maybe that being a boss, but it ends up just being an enemy. And they show some enemies here. Obviously, these are kind of where the final locations are for them. Uh, but when they're doing the panning shots, they actually don't have any of the enemies. And you can see up here this tiny little bit of uh, white glowing, this little glowing bit here, that's an item. Uh, that's actually in there in the base game, but it just removed the enemies from these panning shots. 
and they didn't like kill them using um, an engine script or anything. They just had them removed. Then obviously they show it a bit later. And then for the final Dark Souls 2 DLC, they released another trailer. So Crown of the Iron King didn't actually have any trailers for it. It had some gameplay footage, but no actual official trailers. Which is really interesting because I think that's the best, the best uh, DLC they had in the trilogy. And yet, the trilogy of the Dark Souls 2 DLCs, and yet they didn't have much promotional material for it. It just kind of got shoved in there as the middle one. Then for the ending one, The Crown of the Ivory King, we have a fairly decent sized trailer. This trailer is also very interesting. It's the only trailer so far that actually includes only DLC content. Obviously the DLC does reuse some aspects, but everything you see in the trailer is for the DLC. And what's interesting is they only show Ava, and they don't talk about the co-op area, um, out Frozen Outskirts. Probably for the best, but it's interesting. Obviously, if they kind of prelude to it uh, with the how long can you survive the snowstorm. But it doesn't show a lot of the DLC. Like, you have the guy walking, the official character walking, and he's only walking really towards the cathedral, the Cathedral of Blue. And so, you don't really get a good scope of how large it is. I mean, you kind of do in some of these other screenshots, but it's not a lot, right? And that's something that I think Shadow of the Ear Tree did really well, is that shows a lot of different scenes. Of course, it's also a bigger DLC, so hopefully it does have more scenes to show. Moving on, we have the Old Hunters, uh, DLC trailer, this is the announcement trailer. And this is actually on PlayStation's channel, which is interesting because since it's a PlayStation exclusive, they did most of the marketing instead of Bandai Namco.
And so again, this is the first transition to what you really see as more of a cinematic, like completely cinematic experience for a trailer by From Software. And a quarter of it is basically just intros, right? Like, you get a little cinematic here and then more intros. And again, what's interesting is they don't show a lot of bosses as far as like the DLC bosses. You get a cutscene of Ludwig and a little quick fight scene with him. And what's actually interesting here is this isn't the video. Uh, this is actually because Bloodborne, Bloodborne is such a low frame rate. It's 30 FPS and it's not a consistent 30 FPS. When you're looking at like that, that looks really janky and that's actually how it looks in game because despite being 60 FPS on the video, it's actually not. It's 30 FPS in game and where you can kind of count the frames because it was losing frames on that attack. And the final, they have like a little secret boss here that they're, you know, you don't know a secret until you actually play the DLC, but Lady Maria, just a very brief glimpse. And I think we kind of are going to see that with Shadow of the Earth Tree and some of the other trailers going on, is just very brief glimpses of what their final intended boss is going to be. And obviously we saw that with Manus in the Dark Souls 1 trailer. So this is the official launch trailer for Bloodborne. Maggie. Very short. As far as trailers go, it doesn't really show much. It, it's not a good trailer. I would probably put this in F tier. Like, this is a horrible trailer as far as marketing goes. Because unless you know Bloodborne and you've seen the other trailer, you don't get a lot out of this to make you actually want to buy the game. Or the DLC, rather. And now here we are back to the mainline Dark Souls trilogy. This is the Ashes of Ariandel DLC announcement trailer. Again on Bandai Namco's official YouTube channel. Have come. 
at last. <laughs> Okay, now obviously the Ashes of Ariandel isn't a very popular DLC. But what I find interesting with its marketing is it actually looks better than the Ring City as if you just look at the trailers. Although, to be fair, they did use a lot of vanilla gameplay towards the end. Whatever though, right? You start off cinematic again, and this is, again, FromSoft's trying to just transition into more of a cinematic sort of trailer. And you do see, you see the entrance to the DLC, right? And they never really tell you where the entrance is. Uh, in Dark Souls 1, they didn't tell you explicitly, but they released a leak, quote unquote, of where the DLC was supposed to go into, or you're supposed to enter in the quest line to get the DLC. Which is interesting. And then, they don't show any boss fights here. But they do show it in the next trailer. I mean, I guess they show, like, a little bit of Ariandel, but that's not super interesting. They show a lot of different areas, but not in enough detail where you'd be able to piece together what the DLC is actually about. And the vanilla gameplay obviously kind of distracts from that. But, like, the wolf howling up here and the Millwood Knight is very reminiscent of the Dark Souls 1. Um, is very reminiscent of uh, the more cinematic. And, like, they show the flies here and stuff, and the cathedral up here. What's interesting is, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to be able to see the town from this bridge. I'm not sure if you're just not able to see it due to the camera angle, or if it's just not there yet. Uh, it's interesting. And if you zoom in, you can't see the Corians that are supposed to be lining the... Um, ...pathway up here. And then, obviously, with the rot flies... They look, I'm not sure if this is a low render distance issue or if this is how they look in actual the actual game. I haven't noticed them being this choppy. If you look at it, they're twitchy, but they look choppy when doing it, which I think they fixed for the final game. And so in some of the vanilla shots, you're seeing some DLC spells, which is interesting. And you also see the interest of the DLC here. This is from the actual cutscene. Yeah, I would say I have to give this a solid B. This is a really good trailer. But unfortunately, the DLC isn't that good. Now, here's the launch trailer. Again, on Bandai Namco's.
Let this be a remembrance of this cold world. This is uh, really interesting. The cover that you hear isn't actually a cover. It's just these specific lines that uh, they, the artist sang, which is interesting because you can't find this anywhere. And then they did show, obviously they showed entrance again here. They showed more bosses and DLC content from the compared to the first trailer. And they showed more enemies, like, yeah, two different enemy types here, although this is the player wearing the enemy's armor, but that's kind of this, whatever. Uh, then you have the enemy here with different stuff. I think this is Frost Weapon on the spear, because the spear isn't normally that color. That's either Frost Weapon or... Divine? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I think that's Frost, which is interesting, because you see the staff here. And the bell in the background. And then, there are new game modes, or new PvP modes. This is them introducing the DLC, um, obviously the DLC arena. And there was only three to start with, and then they added the fourth one with the Ring City. But it's interesting, PvP game modes, they show a completely vanilla location. This is literally the first bonfire in the actual game, minus the tutorial. And you just have three people standing in the circle. And then... Oh. You see a little bit of the DLC here. The DLC uh, arena is here, and they only showed one. And obviously they're showing Freed, they show the Great Wolf, and the Rock flies again. Ariandel, and then what's interesting is they show the Grave Tender right before. And that's where you get the DLC arena from. And it looks like it's a large location, but... It's interesting that it doesn't really look like a boss, it just looks a normal encounter, especially because right before it you have fighting Sir Vilheim, another just regular encounter. Kind of subverting expectations, and I think they did that because the boss fight's obviously not that great. It's an NPC boss fight and the actual boss is just the wolf here, which this is the first timing encounter of the wolf. Yeah. It's a decent trailer. I'd say I'd put this in B as well. B tier. It's it's okay. It definitely could have been better, but it's one of the best trailers we've we've had. And you can actually see the watchtower here, but you can't see the Millwood Archer. And doesn't look like you can see any of the other Millwood uh, guys walking around, which is interesting. Then we have the Ring City announcement trailer.
This trailer is interesting. It doesn't show a whole lot. It's more of a cinematic trailer again like we've been seeing. They show the drag heap. Uh, which is nice because they don't really show you the Ring City. They show the drag heap, but they don't show the actual Ring City itself. Which is interesting. And you can actually kind of see this if you recognize this from the end of the base game. Uh, in the Solar Cinder arena, you can see all this stuff kind of collapsing towards the middle. Obviously, different location. You show a little bit of the Poison Swamp here. And a little bit of the Archer section, but you don't show the main level, which is interesting. And then they show re reused content from Ashes of Ariandel with the uh, Ring City spell and armor set. And then they show the Angel here and Filianor going to Gale's Arena. And then the only boss they show is Demon Princes. Or Demon Prince. It's a good fight uh, and kind of sets up the expectation that this might be the final boss fight. But again, fake out uh, like they normally do with their DLC trailers. And that's it. There's not a whole lot to it. I would definitely put this on like a C tier. It's a decent trailer, but not that great. I definitely think some of the other trailers were better, were better than that as far as actual content shown. And then here's the launch trailer. So this is the final trailer that uh, From Software has done before Shadow of the Earth Tree, as far as DLC trailers go. Again, what's interesting here is Ashes of Ariandel seems a lot more hyped compared to the Ring City trailer. And I think that's them trying to hype up their weakest link, which didn't really work out in the end. But we actually see all the bosses here, which is kind of a first for a DLC trailer as far as showing all the actual boss fights. Although, I guess Gale is more just a uh, cutscene here. But they show Demon Prince, Gale, a little bit of Madeir at the end. Madeir being the secret fight of the DLC. And then they also showed Half-Life. half light um, Although I'd probably give this trailer a B. A D. It's really not that good. 
because it reuses a lot from the launch or the announcement trailer and adds just a few tiny bits. And you see Half-Life here. It's interesting, I think, maybe I should have added another clip of them with the PvP aspect of this fight because it's just Half-Life in this clip. And that really would have maybe made people think like, oh, is this a PvP style boss like Old Monk? Which I guess maybe they won that as a surprise for the actual people playing through the game. Yeah, most of the trailers I don't think are that good as far as building hype towards the DLC. It's mostly that from software in the early days, new people that played the game would probably want the DLC because they liked the game and they didn't really try catering to any bigger audience outside of that. But if you look at the Shadow of the Earth Tree trailer here, so this is the official Shadow of the Earth Tree trailer, the gameplay reveal trailer. Obviously, Elden Ring had a much higher player count, and so they're trying to drag that back in. So, I'm not going to play all of it, but it's trying to build a lot more hype, like saying, hey, this is Elden Ring, but better. And you can see that in the final, like, they show more moves, right? They show different weapon types, which they didn't really do in the previous trailers. And, like, they showed some bosses. And then Mesmer, they actually show, you know, the at least what we assume to be the final boss. And they show dueling shields, different spells, different incantations, different ashes of war. And in the previous trailers, they didn't really do that. They weren't really building hype in that way. Uh, there were some, but it was a lot of vanilla stuff mixed in. This is a completely, well, outside of Mog, a completely DLC trailer. That shows all the DLC locations, DLC enemies, DLC armors, DLC fights, DLC spells, incantations, all that, right? Like you have the bear, the repeating crossbow, and they didn't really do that in the uh, previous trailers. So hopefully that means they're not putting all their cards on the table and shout out the earth tree is very big, but also has a lot of content to it. When they tried hyping it up before, like we saw with Ashes of Ariandel, it kind of fell flat because Ashes of Ariandel was not a good DLC. It was very short, there wasn't a lot of stuff to it. They had one good boss fight and only two boss fights total. Not saying that Shadow of the Earth Tree is going to end up like that, but as far as them hyping it up, they haven't really done something like that before. So, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you in a few days to play some Shadow of the Earth Tree. It's going to be fun. Hopefully.